Aga morning, Grade 8 learners! Welcome to Grade 8 Science, Valenzuela Live, where learning science is fun and exciting. I am Sir B, at your service, from Vicente P. Trinidad National High School. In this session, we'll be focusing on Newton's third law of motion under Unit 1, Force, Motion, and Energy. At the end of discussing this topic, we should be able to infer that when a body exerts a force on another, an equal amount of force is exerted back on it. Please prepare the following, your pen, your notebook, and your learner's module in science. If you're ready, then let's get started. I have a balloon. I am going to uh, release this inflated balloon at the count of three. Kindly observe what will happen to the balloon as I release it. Are you ready? One. Two. Three. Now, after that short activity, let us answer the following questions. First, what happened to the balloon once I released it? Second, what do you think is the reason why the balloon behaved that way? You can write your answers in the comment section. Again, recall the events that happened as I released the balloon. Later, we are going to find out if your answers are correct. Newton's third law describes the relationship between two forces in an interaction. That is why it is known as the law of interaction. Law of interaction states that when one object exerts a force on another object, the other object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first object. Two types of force exist under law of interaction. One force is called the action force and the other force is called the reaction force. One object exerts action force while the other object exerts a reaction force. Before describing these two forces that undergo interaction, we must identify first the two objects that are involved in the interaction. We can identify them as object A and object B. Love interaction states that when one object exerts a force on another object, the other object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first object. If we have object A and object B, we can translate the statement. This first statement that we had a while ago, and we can translate it into this. When object A exerts a force on object B, object B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. Just like what you see right now in the figure above. Now that we know how to identify forces that undergo interaction, let us have some examples to practice identification. We have here a launching rocket and a moving car. Let us focus first on the launching rocket. What object, as shown in the example, makes the rocket launch? Take a look. There is something there in the rocket that makes it being launched. 
Yes, it is the burning gas that is released from the rocket. Therefore, what are the two interacting objects in this example? You may write your answer in the comment section. Correct! It is the rocket and the gas. Based on this figure, what do you think is the direction of the gas? Is it upward or downward? Write your answer in the comment section. Consider the orientation of the rocket. What is the direction of the rocket and then the answer that I'm looking for is the direction of the gas. What is the direction of the gas? The correct answer is the gas moves downward. Now, which object makes the gas move downward? Correct. The rocket makes the gas downward. So the rocket pushes the gas downward. If that is the case, describe the force exerted by the burning gas towards the rocket. Write your answer in the comment section. For your answer in that question, you may base it from my previous statement as shown here below. So what happens to the rocket? If you answered that the burning gas pushes the rocket upward, you got it right. Now, let's proceed to the next example. Here is a car moving forward along the road. What are the two interacting objects in this case? You may write your answer in the comment section. So let's see. The two interacting objects in this example are the car and the road. Now before we proceed, which specific part of the car interacts with the road? We know that uh, there are several parts of the car. So, which specific part of the car interacts with the road? Exactly. It is the tires. So, let's discuss the interaction between the car tires and the road. In which direction does the tire push the road? Is it forward or backward? Write your answer in the comment section. Yes. So the tire pushes the road backwards. If that is the case, what is the direction of the force exerted by the road to the tires of the car? Is it forward or backward? Write your answer in the comment section. If you answered that the road pushes the car forward, you got it correctly. Now, let's go back to the two examples. Recall that we mentioned a while ago that during an interaction, there is an action force and a reaction force. In our first example, the launching rocket, which object exerts the action force? Is it the rocket or the burning gas? How about in the second example? Is it the car tires or the road that exerts the action force?
The correct answer is both. Okay? Both the rocket and the gas can exert either action force or reaction force. So the same thing applies with the moving car. Both the car tires and the road either exert action force or reaction force. Now, what is the reason why? It is because action and reaction forces occur at the same time between two objects. In other words, action and reaction forces between two objects occur simultaneously. Let us look back at the statement of the law of interaction because I have another question for you students. Since the statement says that both action and reaction forces are equal and opposite with each other, does that mean that these forces cancel each other out? Yes or no? Write your answer in the comments section. Do action force and reaction force cancel each other out? Yes or no? The correct answer is no. Action and reaction forces do not cancel each other out. Why is that so? It is because action and reaction forces act on two separate objects. Let me show you another example that will clearly show you that action and reaction forces do not cancel each other out. What is shown right now is a falling rock that is about to hit the ground. What are the two objects that are interacting in this example? Yes, it is the rock and the ground. Now, before we continue, it is important to remember that the ground is part of the Earth's surface. What kind of force does the Earth exert toward the rock? Is it a push or a pull? Correct. It is a pull. Now, in which direction does the Earth pull the rock? Is it upward or downward? Yes, the Earth pulls the rock downward. Now, how does the rock react to the force exerted by the Earth's surface? The answer is, the rock pulls the Earth upward. But, which pull has a greater effect on the other object? Is it the pull of the Earth or the pull of the rock? It is the pull of the earth that has a greater effect on the rock than the pull of the rock on the earth. We learned in our previous lessons that the pull of the earth is also known as gravity. This clearly shows that action-reaction forces do not cancel each other out. Now, back to these two objects. Yes, both the earth and the rock exert the same amount of force toward each other. But, what is the difference between the Earth and the rock which causes the Earth's gravitational force to have a greater effect on the rock? Now, if you are having difficulty answering that question, let me show you a more actual comparison of these two objects. This is the Earth. And the rock is located somewhere around here. Now, let me ask you the question again. What is the difference between the Earth and the rock 
which causes the Earth's gravitational force to have a greater effect on the rock? You may write your answer in the comment section. Take a look at the difference between the Earth and the rock which is somewhere around in this portion of the Earth. That's it! The Earth has a greater mass compared to the rock. This is relative to Newton's law of inertia. An object with a greater mass possesses greater inertia. Both the rock and the Earth exert a gravitational force which means each object attracts the other object towards itself. So the Earth attracts the rock towards itself and vice versa. Although, both objects exert the same amount of force with each other, we don't see the Earth falling towards the rock because the Earth is too large for us to see its motion. Also, the attraction between the Earth and the rock follows Newton's law of universal gravitation, while the motion of the rock and the Earth follows Newton's law of acceleration. Let's take a look back at the situation that I have shown you. The balloon. What are the two interacting objects in this situation? The interacting forces in this situation are the balloon and the air. Is the force exerted by the air to the balloon a push or a pull? Yes, it is a push. Now, what is the direction of the force of the air to the balloon? How about the force of the balloon to the air? You may write your two statements in the comment section. Again, there is the statement about the force of the balloon towards the air, and there is also a statement of the force of the air towards the balloon. So, how will you describe those two forces? So, this is the correct answer. The balloon pushes the air backwards, while the air pushes the balloon forward. So, remember the following about action and reaction forces. First, action and reaction forces are equal in magnitude and are opposite in direction. Second, Action and reaction forces neither exist without the other. Third, action and reaction forces occur at the same time. Fourth, action and reaction forces act on separate bodies. And last, action and reaction forces do not cancel each other out. Let us now test how much you have learned for today. For each item, fill in the blank with the correct answer from the choices provided. There are five items to answer. I will read each item twice. Are you ready? Then, let's get started. Here is the first item. Newton's third law of motion is known as law of blank. The choices are interaction and reaction. Again, Newton's third law of motion is known as blank. The choices are interaction or reaction. Write your answer in the comment section.
The correct answer is, third law of motion is also known as law of interaction. Let's proceed to the second item. Law of interaction states that there is blank force acting on interacting objects. The choices are a single and a pair of. Again, law of interaction states that there is a blank force acting on interacting objects. The choices are a single and a pair of. Write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer is, law of interaction states that there is a pair of force acting on interacting bodies. Let's proceed to the next item. Item number three. Action-reaction forces have equal magnitudes. They are also acting on the blank direction. The choices are same and opposite. Again, action reaction forces have equal magnitudes. They are also acting on the blank direction. The choices are same and opposite. Write your answer in the comment section. Let's see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is they are also acting on the opposite direction. Let us now proceed to the fourth item. Action-reaction forces blank each other. The choices are cancel and do not cancel. Again, action-reaction forces blank each other. The choices are cancel or do not cancel. Write your answer in the comment section. Let's reveal the correct answer. Action reaction forces do not cancel each other out. Let us now proceed to the last fifth item. Item number five Action reaction forces act on black. The choices are the same body and separate bodies. Again, Action reaction forces act on blank. The choices are the same body and separate bodies. Write your answer in the comment section. I hope you are getting the correct answer so far. Let's see. The, co the correct answer for this fifth item is action-reaction forces act on separate bodies. If you manage to get all five correct answers, you have done a great job. If not, that's okay. You may uh, write your questions and ask them either to your science teacher or even to me. You may write your questions in the comment section and I will do my best to answer all of your questions. That ends our session. See you next week for another episode of Grade 8 Science Valenzuela Live. Stay safe and have a great day.